death penalty, a controversial punishment that's legal in 32 states. But what most people don't know is that the process is loosely regulated and that lethal injection drugs are often untested. Nick Harper brings us this next story from Texas, the state with the highest number of executions in the United States. In this cell, strapped to a metal bed, inmates are put to death. But America is now struggling to keep its capital punishment alive. An ethical boycott by drug makers in Europe refusing to export execution drugs to the United States has led to a shortage of lethal injections. So states are being forced to improvise, instead turning to so-called compounding pharmacies who can supply new chemical concoctions. However, these untested mixtures have led to a series of botched executions. In July, inmate Joseph Wood took almost two hours to die by lethal injection in Arizona. Two others have gone wrong this year, including Clayton Lockett, who died of a heart attack 40 minutes after his lethal injection. Texas lawyer David Matthews is concerned at how little regulation there is for pharmaceutical companies who are now being asked to make killer drugs. Although it's said to be a regulated area, that is pharmaceutical drugs, I think you'll find it's, it's one of the least regulated areas in the, in the world. The US Food and Drug Administration has strict regulations they expect companies to adhere to, but not when it comes to drug manufacturers. I think the biggest, I guess, misconception is that the FDA is testing and doing clinical trials on drugs, and that's simply not true. The FDA relies almost 100% on the manufacturer, or sometimes called the sponsor of the drug. Support for the death penalty has dropped dramatically in the last 20 years. It's now banned in 18 of the 50 states. Since 1996, opposition has risen from 18% to 37%, and more people now favor life in prison over execution. And with no obligation for companies to test how safe a drug is, campaigners argue prisoners are being put at risk of inhumane and unconstitutional suffering. They're experimenting with new drugs. Every state's varying the dosage, uh, uh, the, the mix. The first four executions this year were by four different sets of drugs. Um, each one's a cliffhanger. Texas, which executes more inmates than any other U.S. state, uses a single drug rather than a three-drug cocktail. So far, the execution chamber, housed here in the town of Huntsville, has not experienced problems like those seen in other states. Since 1982, the Huntsville unit has been using lethal injections. Since then, more than 500 inmates have been executed, at an average rate of one every three weeks. The state says that its drugs do work but some say there are many unanswered ethical questions about the drugs themselves. Some Texas pharmacists are appalled at companies whose only priority is making money. Some people are in it for financial gain without even thinking about morality. The idea that companies who are meant to be creating medicines that cure are instead profiting from death is a bitter pill for pliant. Even if you make money off of something, how can you live with yourself knowing that what you made is going into killing somebody? Whether that person did anything bad or not doesn't matter. It's the fact that I made something that contributed to killing a person intentionally. And that's where I have a major problem with compounding pharmacies making execution drugs. Campaigners feel there's simply too much secrecy. Texas, like other death penalty states, refuses to disclose the source of its drugs, meaning they can remain unregulated and untested. But if the run of botched executions continue, there'll be greater pressure to end what some see as an outdated, inhumane way of dealing with inmates. Nick Harper for Telesaur, Huntsville, Texas.